Rwanda is also known as the land of a thousand hills. Of its 10 million residents, 80% are farmers. Tea is one of the few export goods, but growing it takes a lot of arable land, which is hard to come by in a country as small as this. What Rwanda does have are moist montane cloud forests, such as Gishwati, which are home to unique flora and fauna. Gishwati has a complex ecosystem, which a team of German biologists led by Professor Eberhard Fischer from the University of Koblenz-Landau are trying to understand. Every year, they come across new species, which have adapted to the altitude and climate in the Gishwati forest. Some insects only live on certain plants, and if the plant disappears, their chances of survival are slim. Cataloging life in the forest is a race against time for the scientists. We have here we started work here in 1984, exactly 26 years ago. And when we first drove along this road through the Gishwati, there was forest to the left and the right. Much of the Gishwati was still standing, but now 90% has been cleared, and this little bit, which is extremely valuable, is all that's left. Unimposing species of lichen, moss, insects and mollusks play an important role in the ecosystem. Rwanda was once covered in such woodland, but these days there are only a few enclaves left, and most are no bigger than a couple of square kilometers. Only recently has science begun to truly grasp the price that will be paid by man when there are no worms left to aerate the soil, no trees and plants to store carbon, and when clearing the forest disrupts the water cycle. We've seen floods around the Gishwati where people have cut down parts of the forest and you can see soil erosion everywhere. The climate has changed too. Rainfall has become much less frequent, which makes a forest like this, with its epiphytes, moss and lichen, even more important for an intact local climate. Because this is where the humidity, which passes back into the atmosphere, is stored. So cutting down this forest would be catastrophic for Rwanda's climate. But the forests cannot feed the nation's growing population. Rwanda has neither natural resources nor industry. The land of a thousand hills lives from agriculture, and every square meter is cultivated. But erosion means fertile soil is being washed away, which in turn creates a need for new farmland. It's a vicious cycle. At the University of Butare, Eberhard Fischer and his colleague Zygma Zeidel are working to find ways of halting soil erosion. The most effective method seems to be planting hedges around the fields as their roots help to bind the soil. But hedges take up space that farmers need. So now scientists have hit upon an indigenous plant that stops erosion and at the same time enriches the soil. The ground becomes more fertile and consequently grows crops with higher yields. This is not a place of abundance. With what she can grow on less than a hectare of land, Julie Niira Kamana has to feed four children and her ailing mother. As a widow, she must provide for them all, and if the harvest fails, her family goes hungry. To assure herself a supplementary income, Julie has set up a cooperative with other women. They plant hedges and collect the seeds. Through the pilot project, they aim to spread hedge planting throughout Rwanda, thereby preventing further erosion. We harvest the fruits of this hedge. We split the pods and collect the seeds. We mix them with seeds from other crop plants, like beans, and then sow them. These plants prevent the rains from washing our soil away and even make it more fertile. We can cultivate plants which don't grow on other ground. The hedges have increased Julie's yield and the cooperative has another benefit as well. As there was no market for these seeds, we have created one. 
we buy the seeds. She produces them for us and we take them to other farmers who need them. Or she will produce the seeds in other places and use them to plant new hedges there. Tackling the problem of soil erosion has become a matter of survival in Rwanda. The future not only of 10 million people, but also of the climate and the last mountain cloud forests is at stake. Fisher wants to record the biodiversity to ensure its protection. The botanist has dedicated his entire scientific career to these forests, and he doesn't regret it for a minute. I've been looking for this orchid for at least 10 years. It's a genus with two varieties, one of which grows in Germany. And they can only be seen for between one and two weeks a year. And sometimes they stay underground for years because they don't photosynthesize and parasitize their fungus. You have to be extremely lucky to see one. There are only a few botanists who have ever seen one alive. Not only the biodiversity, but the future of an entire region depends on the survival of these forests.